guys. Uh, because again, we just want to make sure that uh, you're aware of what's going on. Uh, there's a lot of changes happening, right? This is a very fluid time that we're all in. And so it's our goal to keep you informed and uh, to answer any questions that you may have. I do want to let everybody know that we will uh, take questions. <clears throat> uh, Ms. Green will be monitoring the uh, chat. And so we will be taking questions at the end of the presentation tonight. So if you guys do have some questions, um, you know, feel free to kind of keep those uh, ready. You know, hopefully we'll answer many of your questions as we're going through the presentation tonight, but there still may be some uh, lingering questions that you have. And so we wanna do our best to uh, hopefully provide an answer for you. And if not, um, you know, do our best to get back to you with, with that information, okay? So um, as you guys know, the spring semester, the Valverde School Board has uh, decided that we are gonna continue to remain in full distance learning for the remainder of this semester, okay? Um, through the rest of this school year. Um, I'm, I'm already starting to get some questions about what summer and fall will look like. Um, stand by, stay tuned on that. Um, you know, as I mentioned a moment ago, things are very fluid and changing. You know, it's our, it's our goal and it's our hope that we will have the students back in some capacity. Um, certainly by the fall, we hope to have that, but uh, stay tuned on that, you guys. We will keep you informed. Um, you know, of course, you know, we'll be in communication with the county and we'll be looking at the numbers and so on um, and making a determination about what's, what's going to be safe for everybody. But it's our hope that we'll get everybody back on campus. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll certainly keep you guys um, posted on that, okay? So hopefully everybody's aware of the schedule. Um, but I wanted to just kind of quickly review so you know when your students should be, uh, you know, in attending their, their uh, sessions with their teachers uh, on their Chromebooks. So we're using a block schedule format. So as you guys can see there on the screen, Mondays and Thursdays, your students will be attending their first, second, and third period classes. That means they are to be on their Chromebooks uh, with their teachers during that time. Uh, we have 90 minute or an hour and a half long sessions. Um, some teachers will stay on the entire time. Some teachers are staying on as little as 30 or 45 minutes. It just depends on the teacher. It depends on the course. It depends on the activities for that day. But parents, we want to make sure you're aware of when your students should be logging in and uh, participating in their class uh, sessions. And then you'll see there on Tuesday and Fridays, the students will be attending their periods four, five, and six. Okay, 8.30 is start time every day. We, we tried to really keep it simple. Um, so parents, every morning, every school day, uh, your students should be logging on at 8.30 in the morning, okay? So Tuesdays and Fridays are periods four, five, and six. And then for those students that have a zero period and seventh period, uh, they will also be uh, doing those on Tuesdays and Fridays, okay? And so you can see the time periods there. Um, again, we want you to be aware of when your students should be logging on, all right? And then uh, if we look at Wednesdays, Ms. Green, if we want to go ahead and move to the next slide there. <clears throat> Wednesdays are a different schedule. Notice it still starts at 8.30. We wanted to keep that consistency that every day it's an 8.30 start time. But you'll notice that um, they, are, they are shorter uh, class periods on these days, okay? And Wednesdays are the day where students are going to be reporting to their classes. Uh, one week, they'll go to period one, two, and three. And then the next Wednesday, the following week, they'll do periods four, five, and six. And you notice, you guys, there are 30 minute chunks there. Wednesdays are the um, real big opportunities for students to come in and get extra help. Uh, the teachers are not teaching new content on this day. This is a day to review um, and to um, reinforce any concepts that have been taught. So it's really important that your students are logging in. Now, some students may not stay on the entire time. If the student is doing fine and doesn't need to maybe do any missing work, the teacher may dismiss them relatively quickly, but some students will be staying on for maybe the entire 30 minute session to get help uh, from their teachers, okay? So it's really important that they're, that they're attending those sessions on Wednesday, okay? And then we have the students reporting to their advisory for a quick 10 minutes, and then they're uh, reporting to their Coyote Connection. And I think Ms. Green will talk a little bit more about Coyote Connection, but it's an opportunity for kids to uh, interact with staff um, around a variety of topics that are of interest to them, 
Okay, so that's what Wednesday's schedule looks like. It's a shorter day for the students and then in the afternoon they are working on work independently. Okay, Ms. Green, we can go ahead and move to the next one. Parent involvement, we are always looking for ways for our parents to be involved. Um, of course, our parents play a, a, a very important role in the educational process. So parents, we just wanna make you aware there's a, here's a few ways that you can be involved. We have our school site council that meets once a month. Um, we do elections for those. So this year's is already done, but if you're interested in future school years, you can certainly uh, be looking for information in the beginning of the year. Um, we have our English Learner Advisory Council or, or what's commonly called ELAC and those meet once a month and those are primarily focused on um, our parents of our English learners. And then we have our African American Community Circle and that is a district group as well. So these are just a few ways, parents, I would encourage you to find ways to get involved. I know we're all busy, um, but I know we have parents that want to find ways to get involved. I would encourage you guys, um, if you have any questions about these, please feel free to reach out to me. Let's go ahead, Ms. Green, and move to the next one. <clears throat> All right, so a couple of quick uh, reminders for you guys. Um, every week we send out a message to our parents. So please uh, check your emails. We typically have those go out on Sundays and it's just kind of an overview of the upcoming week, uh, any important announcements. Uh, we want you to be informed of what's going on. So please um, check your emails in particular on Sundays, those when those go out. Um, we also have a monthly calendar that Mrs. Green puts together that kind of shows you um, what events we have going on on campus for that month. And you can go visit our school website for that. And then I wanted to make sure you guys had my email address. Okay, I always wanna make sure that you can uh, communicate with me. Um, so take a picture of that, um, do what you need to do. But if you ever have a question about something, uh, please, you know, contact me. We're here to serve you. At the end of the day, we are here to serve you to make sure our students are successful and having a great um, experience, okay? So please feel free to reach out to me. I always work to try to get back to parents uh, within 24 hours, if not sooner. Um, so, if, you know, if there's a question or concern that you have, please um, make sure that you are uh, able to reach out to me and I'll get back to you on that, okay? So again, parents, we thank you so much. Um, look forward to hearing from you and we wanna make the rest of this school year um, a successful year. So at this time, I'm gonna turn things over to Assistant Principal, Mrs. Odom. Mrs. Odom, it's all yours. Hi, um, I know that this year, uh, you're gonna hear a lot that it is atypical. Uh, some of your students um, are coping very well with distance learning and some of our students are not. And what we try to do, and what we're doing this year, uh, like we do every year, is try to meet the needs of students wherever they are. So uh, my role, the major role that I play is intervention, um, providing um, assistance to students uh, in terms of academics, behavior, social and emotional. Um, and um, we've seen a big increase because this is just, it's, it's just different this year. Let's just say that. Um, so I want to start off by talking about attendance. Attendance uh, is a big thing. Um, there is a huge correlation between attendance and grades. Uh, when I'm calling parents and I see that the students are not attending class, um, I probably 90% of the time, their grades reflect that as well. So we'll talk about that a little bit later in the academics. Um, now, we do have attendance techs on campus to help you with any attendance issues. Uh, if your student is going to miss school, please let us know. If your student's uh, last name ends uh, in, uh, begins with A through L, uh, the attendance tech that you contact is Lucia Rodriguez. If your student's last name begins with the M through Z, you contact Ms. Uh, Perry, Christina Perry. Um, if you go to the next, um, students, um, they if they have any problems with their, e um, let's just say the student couldn't get into their um, their classes, please have this, your child email their teacher so that they will not mark them absent. Okay. The other thing is is that, um, and we'll talk about this about attendance. We they are taking attendance every single period, so. Uh, like for example, today I got a, uh, a call, I have a student 
with Valverde and um, he missed uh, a, a period. And I got a call for one period and it tells you what period it is. I'm sure some of you guys are getting those calls as well. Um, but please, attendance is so important. It is a big correlation between your student going to class and the grades. Um, the other uh, role I have is with uh, behavior. I know the students are not on campus, um, but we still, um, we're Yodis, whether we're on campus or not. And so behavior is really important. Um, so our model is not changed. We just have to tweak it a little bit because we're on um, you know, distance learning, but our model still is be respectful, responsible and involved. Uh, the, the real important part of this um, expectation is really being involved and kids are showing it. Um, now that they're getting used to their teachers, they are um, showing up, they are turning on their monitors more. And that really does, a, uh, by the way, it really boosts the spirits of our teachers. Uh, they do wanna get to know your students. I know sometimes uh, our students don't like turning on their cameras, uh, you know, all kinds of reasons, but if they can turn it on, please encourage your child to turn the, the cameras on. It really supports the teachers there um, at OV, here at OV. Um, next. So um, although the students are not on campus, we still just monitor behavior. And one of the ways we monitor behavior is through what we call a gaggle alert. My apologies. A, a gaggle alert. And that simply means that if a student is using his or her Chromebook inappropriately, we receive messages. Um, if I usually receive messages that are like they're they're in white. And what that means, that signals to me is that a student has used some kind of profanity while using his or her Chromebook. The, uh, when I get the gaggle alert and it's in yellow, it usually means something like there's some sexual in nature. Um, they're probably showing pictures that they shouldn't or watching pictures or receiving pictures or sending pictures. And you usually get calls from me uh, with either um, if it's very serious about the uh, profanity, but definitely pictures, uh, excuse me, phone calls when it's yellow. And then red is very serious. We get our officers involved with this one. And that's when a student is uh, crying out for help and they're asking, um, you know, they might be considering self-harm. Um, and so we're, we, we are monitoring kids and what they're doing on their computers because we care. We wanna make sure that, you know, it's, it's right now a lot of kids are, going through a lot of things. And so we, we are definitely monitoring what they're doing on the computer. Um, go ahead and go next. Okay, like I said, uh, academics, uh, we were very surprised, at least I was, our ninth grade group. Uh, we talked to them yesterday and a lot of kids um, are struggling. This is, they haven't even seen, been on their campus, but our ninth and 10th graders, uh, excuse me, our 10th and 11th graders have. Um, if you see that pyramid that's on the slide, that's basically typically how uh, students normally do. And what I mean by that is the green, most kids get it. They're at tier one. I would say about 85% of our students or 80% 80, 80 of our students are at tier one. And then the yellow is tier two. Uh, typically it's about 15% of our kids who need extra time and support. And then our tier three students are usually 5%. Uh, for our 11th graders this year, um, we just finished our semester one grades this December and our 10th graders out of the 667 10th graders, about 70% of the kids were at tier one. So remember it's about 85%. Um, and we know that it is some other factors, including distance learning has something to do with that. Uh, for 11th grade, um, it was uh, 500 out of 581 kids, 66% uh, of our kids were at tier one. So we, you know, we know, and that's why if you or you're receiving a weekly call, it's because we wanna, we don't wanna wait until six weeks and your student is still struggling. We're calling every single week to, che um, to check in. It's called a check in with your student. So thank you so much for answering the calls and just working with us because we wanna make sure that they are gonna be uh, successful this semester. All right. And um, I wanted to also say that there are some kids who initially was a shock to them. They didn't wanna be in distance learning, but they got themselves together. So we have been acknowledging kids about progress. 
We are also about seeing if a kid moved from a tier three to a tier two or a tier two to a tier one. Uh, we even recognize kids and there are about nine students out of our um, 2,500 um, students who actually moved from a tier one. That means a less than a 1.0 to a 2.0. And so we actually made visits to their homes because we were so proud of them. They made some good choices and got themselves together. Uh, the final thing I want to show you is just so that you can have some power. Um, if you are not already connected to ARIES, uh, or it's a, called a parent portal, you can get access to this, your child's grades. Uh, you can get alerts. You can get ex access to their attendance. Um, my son uh, actually has the Aries uh, link on his cell phone. Uh, whenever I look, look, take a look at his grades, he can go, hey, yeah, I, I saw that too, that kind of thing. But I wanted to show you how, what this looks like. If you go on our website, one second, baby. I'm sorry. Uh, when, <laughs> when you go on our website, you can see the uh, Aries parent portal. So I'm going to go ahead. I think it's my turn. Olivia, you got to wait just a minute, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to close the door. Sorry about that. All right. Um, sorry, where's our... <laughs> My apologies. I don't have it set up. Um, Ms. Dinah, can you... For some reason, I don't have the... Um, I was going to go to Aries myself, but it's not... I didn't... Uh, are you on the share screen? Did you? Yeah, I'm trying to, just a minute guys. Let me see if I can. There you go. Oh, you're, okay. But let me see if I can go to Gary's. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Here we go. This is the parent portal. This is my information. Again, you can go right to our uh, Orange Vista, um, our website and look for Aries parent portal. So this is my, um, okay, here we go. It's my son here. And I, the, the main things I look for, uh, once you get set up and signed in, the main thing, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes, yes okay. can. So, okay. So really quickly, uh, I go right to the grades. I don't play around. I'm going right to this, the grade book. Uh, uh, my son has, uh, we just, I just saw this today. Yesterday, I did, um, did the same presentation for my, for the ninth graders and there was no F here. And so that's how quickly, that's how quickly your grades change or students' grades change uh, if there's missing assignments. So uh, we had a, definitely had a talk about his grades in this class. And I realized, hey, what happened? And, you know, here's, it tells you exactly what's missing. I know this is probably embarrassing for him, but, you know, I, I just want you to see how quickly we didn't, I didn't have this conversation with him yesterday, uh, but I had one today because his grades changed. Um, you can check the grades. You can check, um, let's see, attendance. Let me go back. And I do want to tell you what these what, what these mean. These um, so today is January twenty seventh. Uh, each line, the first line is period one period two, period three, that kind of thing. Today, it says that he didn't go to period four. He didn't go to period six. He went to period two. But let me tell you what the, zero, uh, the zeros mean. Zero means that your child did not go. Two means that they showed up. A C means there was a, an activity at school. And then a four means that the student contacted the teacher and said, hey, I'm having some technical issues and I didn't, I wasn't able to um, attend. Uh, this is crucial. I was able to see it right away what his grades were. 
uh, now that um, I see his grades, I can respond to that. However you do, you know, your own parenting and things like that. But uh, what I, the whole point of this is to have the information readily. And like I said, there is a, it's an actual app for Aries. All you have to do is just go and download it at the app store. Okay. And I think that is it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to our instructional um, coach. Oh, Ms. I'm sorry. Ms. Odom, can you uh -huh. show them the notification? Oh, I'm sorry. I sure can. Let me see if I can go back to it. <laughs> okay, dashboard. I, and you're right. Here's the other one. Um, where go? I'm gonna go back to dashboard. If you go back to dashboard and you see where your name is, it'll give you where you can have notification preferences. And when you click on that, what I decided was every Friday at three o'clock, um, because you can choose anything you want. You can do Saturday morning. If you, you know, you can do uh, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon. I chose Friday so that when it's time for I'm done with work and he's done with school, um, around that time, I can have a conversation about what, um, you know, once they give, they, what this means is that Aries is going to give me the information updated on his grades on Friday at three o'clock. So I don't have to go to the, the uh, website. I'm going to get the information right from Aries and you can set that up the way that you want to and need to. Um, and I, and I think, I think I'm done now. Thanks. And now I'm gonna turn it over to our instructional coaches who, who are gonna tell us a little bit about the resources for our students. Yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Stu. And I'm Erica Martinez. And as uh, I mentioned before, we are instructional coaches. So we work with the teachers um, primarily in the three areas of curriculum, instruction and assessment. Okay, just a little about ourselves. Um, well, I have been working in the district. This is my 16th year. And um, I'm not only an employee in the district, but I also have a child at Orange Vista High School. And um, prior to coming to Orange Vista High School as a freshman, she has been attending private school. So it was a little, you know, pushing on my part for her to come to Orange Vista. But the moment she started, she never regretted a moment. And she has spent four exciting years at Orange Vista High School. Um, we love it and passionate about the school. So your child is in a great place. And I have a similar story. My son uh, was also in private school up through eighth grade. And then I brought him to Orange Vista as a freshman. And he too is now a senior, which is so hard to believe. Uh, he'll be graduating in a few months and it's, it's exciting. Um, like Dr. Stu said, we really truly believe in the work that we're doing here. And um, the proof is we have our kids here. <laughs> so I wanna share a few resources with you. Coyote Ketchup, this is, um, something that we offer for students that need extra time and support on um, Saturdays. So you can see we start this on February 6th and you can see the dates there that we have this offered. The students don't need to register. So they join in, it's from nine to 12, uh, as I said, on Saturdays, and they're able to get help from teachers um, in whatever content it is. So we have teachers working in in each of the different content areas. So if your student needs help in math, in science, whatever it is, they can join that particular session and have uh, a teacher there to support them to get any missing work made up. So as you have already heard, on Wednesdays, we have a special schedule. At Orange Vista, we understand that all students do not learn at the same pace, neither do they have the same learning styles. So we have created um, in the school day for your students to get support. And on a Wednesday, 
um, we pause all new information. There's no new information that's given on Wednesday. And um, students are able to go to their teachers and get help in whatever areas that they have the need. Um, sometimes teachers assign them or they, they themselves could just go and let their teachers know exactly what questions or information that they need help with. And this is a 30 minute block. Erica. The next resource we have is called Paper Tutoring. And this is uh, an awesome resource we have. So it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the students can, they have an app. Um, they just log into their class link and there's a paper app that they click on. And when they go to it, their classes are already preloaded um, into there. So they just click on whatever whatever um, course they need help with or tutoring with. And there is, they're um, hooked up with someone within minutes with, with a tutor and they help them with whatever it is they need help with. And so they are very, um, the tutors are very careful with their, they don't just give answers. They really guide the students and help them to find um, and, and work toward finding the answers. And then the other piece of that is the essay review. So when our students are writing essays for their different classes, they can submit this to the paper tutoring before they turn it in. So they can submit their essay and get feedback. And it's about a 24 hour um, time that they'll get the, they'll get the um, feedback. And then they, it's sent back to them and they can make corrections before they actually send it into or submit it to their teachers. So this is a fantastic resource. Uh, we know our students are, are doing their work at all hours, <laughs> not, you know, so, and, and there aren't teachers available at all hours. So this is something that um, is a fantastic resource to take advantage of. Um, another resource that we have is called the Math Navigator. And the Math Navigator is a self-paced self-monitored math program that students can use to practice math. The program actually tracks their progress and allows students to see what grade level they're at. Um, they can also access this on ClassLink. And um, we suggest or you know, we recommend that students do this at least three times per week for a period of about 20 minutes just to practice. It's just a good program that they can practice and it tracks their progress. And um, every kid is at a different pace. So it's th that's what's really cool about it. In addition to all the resources that we have mentioned, Eric and I have mentioned, there's also um, teachers. They do have their office hours from two to 3.30 daily, excepting on a Wednesday. And this is where students can go to their teachers and get help in whatever areas they want. I would highly recommend though that your students, your kids check with their teachers for the specific time because there are some teachers who teach more than one course. And so um, you wanna know what time they're offering uh, the specific content in which they need help. Um, there's also tutoring that's offered. Again, you wanna check with your um, students, teachers to make sure of the specific time. Um, so these are all the resources we have. We try our best at Orange Vista to make sure all our students are getting the help that they need. Um, what else? We have our email right there. You can take a picture of it. And if there are questions that you have for us, you could always email us anytime. We're here to help you. And next up, we have Mrs. Graham with counseling information. All right, good evening, Coyote parents. I am Mrs. Lucretia Graham and I oversee the counseling office. Um, my email address is here on the slide as, as well as my administrative assistant, Ms. Marlene Terraquez. Um, so if you need to email us at any time, please feel free to do so. Again, we keep saying take a picture. Yes, please take a picture. You might need us. These are our counselors that we have available. Next slide, sorry. Our counselors that we have available. 
um, you are 10th and 11th grade uh, parents. So your counselors would be Miss Van Sant. She might be one um, that you might be able to see. She does uh, grades A through G, I'm sorry, 10th through 12th grade and letters A through G in the alphabet. And her office hours are listed. Um, we have Ms. McMahon, she does our special programs for AVID. Um, Mrs. Saludes, who also does our alphabet G, E through M. Um, Ms. Rivera also does ninth through 12th grade in our special programs for AL, AAL, excuse me, and EL. Ms. Clark does our special programs for our 10th grade scholars, as well as P through Z. And then Ms. Janice does our ninth grade uh, counselor. As you can see on here, we have our office hours for our counselors. So they are available at those times. Again, take a picture. Um, if your student needs help in um, something, if they have some social emotional needs um, that need to be uh, taken care of, uh, they can go and see their counselor virtually, of course, during these office hours. So please have your students take that. Next slide. So my counseling support staff um, can't do anything without these ladies. Um, we have Mrs. Romero, and she is our college and career tech, as well as she does our work permits. So some of your students may have already reached out to her. Her email address is also located on here. So if you do need to get a work permit, um, you know where to find her. Ms. Duran, she's in charge of our credit recovery, and she's also our counseling technician. And some of you probably have already um, gotten in contact with her as our credit recovery just started yesterday. Uh, we have Ms. Joanne. She's our registrar and you would order transcripts from her. So when your students get ready to go to college, um, that's who they will call upon in order to get their grades um, printed out. And then we have Ms. Christina and she's in, um, she's in charge of our new student enrollment um, and also our counseling technician. Next slide. All right, so you should have received in the mail a welcome back letter. And in that welcome back letter, it has your students' credits and transcripts. Um, so please, I asked uh, last night, if you could drop in the chat that you received that letter, that would be great. That, leads, that lets me know our mail is doing its job. We just thought it'd be better to mail it instead of emailing because we know you all are exhausted probably of being in front of a computer, receiving emails, phone calls. So we wanted to go the good old fashioned way and mail. So hopefully you received that. If you did, drop that in the chat. Uh, we are going to be emailing um, DNF letters every three weeks, a progress report. Um, so if your student gets is receiving a D or an F in a class, uh, the first mailing is going to be February 1st. So you should be receiving it within that week. And as the, um, our instructional coaches mentioned, we do have our Coyote Catch-Up. Our first one is uh, next week, Saturday. So if you get that letter, make sure your student attends the session on Saturday so they can uh, get their grade up. We also have a s'mores newsletter and that comes out every month for every single grade level. So every grade level gets one and I'll show you how to obtain it uh, because I don't know if some of you have seen it but you'll be able to find out how to do that. And then also community service hours. It is still 40 hours as a graduation requirement. Um, it has been waived for our seniors this year uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, but there are community service um, uh, offerings that are available virtually. And if you want to find out what those are, please contact our college and career, uh, Ms. Romero, and she'll be happy to assist you with that. Next slide, our Google Classrooms. So this is where you would obtain any news, uh, discussions, office hours, et cetera, anything that you want to find out uh, for counseling your child would go to their Google Classroom. So your children are class of 2022 and class of 2023. And so those are the ways in for them to get into the Google Classroom and also for you to get in as well. Um, it is open to parents. I encourage you to go there. It gives you everything that you need to know so it'll keep you up to date. So please do that. Next slide, please. All right, each student has a four-year plan that is mapped out. And each four-year plan that's mapped out is helping our students become college and career ready, um, and also high school uh, graduate ready as well. So if you log into your ARIES portal and click on classes, and then you click on the academic plan, if you can go to the next slide so, you can, so I can show, see what that looks like. If you go and click on academic plan, you will see a sheet here that has colors. 
So the green labels classes that you have already taken. Okay, so the student has already taken these classes. Orange labels classes that you are currently taking. So orange is for that. And blue labels classes that you will take in the future, that your student will take in the future. So it's all mapped out. It's very, very good. Our counselors have worked hard for each student to have one. If you go and you look underneath Aries portal and click on classes and academic plan, and you don't see a four-year plan mapped out for your student, please email me right away so we can get that mapped out for your student. All right, next slide. We are going to be doing our course requests for the fall for the next school year. Um, that's coming up very soon. Um, we're going to be doing that in March for the class of uh, 2022. We're going to go um, March 8th and uh, March 8th and 9th through our ELA classes, uh, class of 2023, March 15th and 16th through the ELA classes. So what's gonna end up happening is that um, the students essentially will just be choosing their electives because like I said, their academic plan is already mapped out for them um, as far as their core classes are concerned, uh, but their elective classes, they do get an opportunity. Hopefully they get an opportunity if they're not doing a credit recovery or trying to recoup something, uh, they get an opportunity to choose their elective. Next slide. All right, so our graduation requirements, um, we need to make sure our students, and we want to make sure that they are A through G uh, compliant uh, and college ready. And so in order for them to do that, they must receive a C or better in their courses. And you can see here it's A through G um, in each, in each um, book here shows you with the graduation cap, how many years the student needs uh, to obtain in order for them to be A through G compliant. So if you have any questions with counseling, you can drop them in the chat or you can email me or their counselor and we will be happy to assist you. Uh, thank you so much for your time uh, with counseling. And I'm gonna move over and be Mrs. Zamora next. <laughs> Mrs. Zamora is um, doing our uh, Spanish version of, of our presentation. So. I'm going to introduce her slides. Uh, Mrs. Zamora oversees testing and facilities. And um, right now we have our AP test uh, that is still going to happen. So our AP test is still happening. It did happen last year too. Um, our testing window is May 3rd through May 14th. So um, if you have an AP student, please be aware of those dates. Um, AP, we do have uh, preparedness, um, AP readiness, dates for our students and what that does is it helps the students get prepared for the AP exam. It's offered um, every month. Our next one is February 13th and it's from 8.30 to 12.30 and your student will sign up with their AP teacher um, who will also help them with that. Our AP coordinator is Ms. Vargas. So if you have any questions, she is the go-to um, on that. She has Google Classroom Remind and it's also on the OV website. Um, so again, if you have any questions with that, you may um, give her a call. We, excuse me, we also have the CAS test that is coming up um, for juniors in math and English and science. Um, and then um, it's not the sophomores yet. The sophomores, you guys will take it um, next year. So it's currently, um, it's kind of iffy right now. Uh, they are definitely saying at this moment that we will be taking it. It is going to be virtual. Um, so it is online, um, but uh, please stay uh, tuned for those dates for the CASP uh, testing. Also want to mention that when you are coming to our campus, that it is a safe campus. Um, we do have hand sanitizers at the front of the office, as well as anyone who um, enters our campus must be wearing a mask at all times. They have to be masked up. If they come beyond our doors, like our teachers and such, they do get a temperature check. So they have to get their temperature checked as well. And um, they do have to sign in and on, on a COVID-19 form. So um, I hope that helps. And I am going to go ahead and turn it over to our athletic director, Mr. Eric Zomo. Oh, thank you, Ms. Graham. I am, um, again, I'm, I'm Eric Zomo. Uh, we have a couple of Zomos. My brother's the head football coach, Greg Zomo. This is my contact uh, information and the rest of uh, the athletic department. I'm assisted by Ms. Estrada and, uh, and Mr. Randall. We also have a, uh, a Twitter account. So if you're interested in following us, you can 
You can get updates for, uh, you know, athletics uh, related updates as well. But uh, you can give me a call or, or, or send me an email at, at any time with any sports related, athletics related uh, you know, questions or concerns. Next slide, please. Thank you. There, there's not a, a, you know, a whole lot of uh, information that I can share tonight. Um, I'm sure most of you are probably aware that um, our uh, athletics uh, have been uh, paused by, uh, by the district. So we had, a, we had a short window where we were able to um, condition with a select group of, uh, of athletes. And uh, but that was put on pause prior to uh, the winter break. And we haven't been allowed to resume uh, conditioning. And so, uh, but what I did want to share tonight is, is the, um, give you the information about the, the, the window uh, for, for whatever sport you might be interested in, and, as well as the, um, the COVID aspect of it. Um, you know, each, each sport was assigned uh, one of the, uh, the COVID-19 tiers, the countywide tiers. And so it, it will give you uh, uh, maybe a clearer picture, a better understanding of, of how likely uh, a particular sport might, you know, could potentially have a season and, and when that season would take place. And so we're currently, uh, CIF it, during the summer, they condensed the, uh, the traditional fall, uh, winter and uh, spring uh, sports seasons um, into, into two seasons. And, uh, and we're currently in season one, but once the stay at home order was uh, put in place, all uh, athletic uh, events were, were uh, canceled or postponed and they haven't resumed, uh, been allowed to resume yet. And so, and so, um, yes. And so um, it, it does include a uh, uh, marching band. And so uh, it, it marching band isn't listed, but their their season was canceled early on. And so uh, we entertained the, the thought of, of, of bringing them out to uh, the conditioning. And that was, that was, um, you know, that was, uh, it was, it, once it was paused and we just, we kind of, uh, you know, put that, you know, put that to the side. So this will hopefully give you an idea of just kind of the likelihood of, of when, you know, uh, a sport, uh, when it happens and, and, and could it, if it could potentially happen. And this information is also available on the CIF website. Uh, next slide, please. If you are, if you are uh, interested and uh, in participating in athletics, um, you know, you can follow the link on our uh, school website, uh, which uh, will lead you to our athletics page. And you can, you can get all the information about our eligibility requirements. And still, you know, we still have to maintain a 2.0. We still have to pass a minimum of four classes and um, in our athletic clearance uh, process as well. So under general forms, there's a, there's a, a lot of information on that athletics page, but, um, Specifically, there's a link for uh, the athletic clearance process, which is done completely online, and um, and it'll walk you through that entire process. If you have any questions or, or concerns about it, you, again, you can always email me or, or my assistant, and, uh, and and we'll walk you through it. And there's also a, a link to uh, the coach's information. And so right now, we don't we're not allowed to practice, uh, and we don't have any any you know events. Um, that are set to happen. We, you know, we have scheduled events, but we haven't been cleared to participate in anything. And so, uh, the the best thing to do, as uh, to if you are interested, is to to go through the clearance process, um, get yourself clear that way, make sure you're eligible, and then connect with whatever uh, you know sports specific coach, and they can you know give you an idea of if and when we are allowed to resume uh, our conditioning and practice. Uh, you know what their plan is and what their procedures are, procedures are. Um, I think that's about it. If you have any questions or concerns, again, just feel free to email or, or, or call me. Thank you. And I will hand it over now to uh, Mrs. Green, our activities director. Hello and good evening to all of our, our parents. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I'm going to take us home and then you guys can ask us questions. We're going to open it up um, in the chat and the Q&A. Um, as soon as we are done. So I am Mrs. Green, our the activities director at Orange Vista High School. It is an amazing school to be at and your kids have already been there for a year or two. And if they haven't stepped foot on campus yet, 
welcome to Orange Vista High School. Um, we are one of the most spirited high schools around and I take extreme pride in that because for us, Orange Vista is a home away from home. So when your kids are on campus, know that we are protecting them as if they are our own, like um, others on the panel. I also have a student here at Orange Vista. So yes, we trust our kids to be here. We definitely are taking care of yours as well. Um, they are all of our, our children. Um, so from my side of things with ASV, um, we are the, the culture, the heartbeat, the trying to keep everything going um, and keeping everybody tight knit. Um, my uh, colleague is Miss Summer Leonard. She's our bookkeeper. So she runs the financial portion of our school. Um, and those are our, that's our contact information right there for you. Um, spirit activities. So keep on going with our spirit activities. We're still, we still have our apparel on sale. Um, so you can log onto the school website for any of those things. We're trying to keep that orange spirit alive. Um, so on Wow Wednesdays, it's Wow. So yes, it's Wear Orange Wednesday. And then also our Future Ready Fridays, encouraging our college going culture on campus. We want our kids to wear college apparel. And I know right now, a lot of the times, it's like pajama day all the time. It's amazing. However, um, while we're still in this distance learning world, we're trying to put on some um, events, trying to keep the kids involved, um, as well as having our spirit weeks. And like I said, on Wednesdays, you can always pick things up. You can purchase things on our web store and we are available for you. Coyote Connections. Oh my goodness, this started today. Yes, it started today and I am happy to report back that our students that were involved, they enjoyed it. Um, our teachers and staff, this is our, this is our way of keeping our kids connected to the campus um, with the social aspect. After last semester, we realized a lot of the times they're only logging on the computer to do their work and they get tired of it. And it's that Zoom fatigue and Okay, yes, we're worried. We want our kids with the, the academic portion of school because th that's why we're here. And there is a big social aspect that's missing in this distance learning world because a lot of people just don't want to leave the house because um, it's our safety. That's what we're thinking about. Um, so, with that part being said, we have just um, put into place the Coyote Connections. It's going to happen on our Wednesdays where we have our, um, our, our traditional Wednesdays and teachers host sessions and all types of different topics. Um, there's camping, fishing, Disney was a big hit today. Um, they had a lot of students in there, natural hair care. So um, taking care of my hair because all the beauty salons are shut down. Um, cosmetology, doing nails. A lot of people have ordered nail things off of Amazon. Um, classic cars, gaming, anime, astrology, finances. A lot of our kids are getting jobs. So we're trying to get ways to get our kids connected and talking um, about things that interest them um, at this time. So they happen on Wednesdays from 1040 to 1115. Um, and then also it's kind of like a club meeting thing and all our athletes can get together with their coaches so they can kind of be around each other and we'll see each other via Zoom. But it's a good time for our kids to just socially connect. Um, here is something amazing. Academic recognition from first semester. It's hard to stay motivated in this time when you're at home and it's just like, okay, I'm tired of doing work. But our kids stepped up to the plate. So from the class of 2022 and 2023, that's you guys, um, we will be acknowledging all of our students that have a 3.5 GPA or higher, um, have reclassified from our English language learner program, um, our OSHA certification through our CTE programs. If you passed an AP test in the spring of 2020, and then also for our juniors, especially we have our junior honor guard that we will also be acknowledging, which are the top 25 of the, of the class of 2022. Oh my goodness, that's next year, 2022. Um, so on next Wednesday, we are going to have our Coyotes in the Spotlight academic drive-through celebration for our students. Um, you're simply going to come in, but you, well, you're not going to simply come in. You're going to drive in. You're going to see all the lights and say, oh my gosh, this is all for me and my student. And yes, parents, you are working hard too, staying on top of these kids to get this work done. And we appreciate you. Um, you'll drive through. Um, 
enjoy the, the parade portion of it, say hi to your teachers that are on the route. Um, you'll pick up your items, your certificates, and then of course we got some goodies for you to take, some Orange Vista goodies. And then you can take your pictures and then you see all the lights. But I'm telling you guys, the spotlights are going to be all over Paris just for you and your academic accomplishments from last year. So can't wait to see you guys next Wednesday. Um, the invitations will be coming out specifically to the students' email addresses and parent email addresses if we have them on file. If for whatever reason, your Aries parent portal is not up to date with your email address, you won't be getting it. So make sure you go onto that Aries parent portal, include your email address so you can always stay informed of what's going on at the school. And if for whatever reason you need to, if you're on social media, um, we're always posting to our Twitter and our Instagram and our Facebook accounts at Orange Vista ASB. We post anything and everything that's going on on campus, as well as awards that our students are receiving for superintendent awards. Um, if there's any special information that needs to come out um, at Orange Vista ASB is the account that you would like to follow to get more information. And that is all from me. However, um, let's go ahead. I know there's a couple of questions in the chat. And Ms. Green. I um, a yes. parent said about um, the mental, um, mental health programs. So if you go to the Google Classrooms that I mentioned um, during my presentation, all that information is there as well. Um, we have also on our OV website, um, the information is there for mental, um, mental health and awareness. We actually have on our OV um, counseling website, we have some uh, mental health tips, um, some, uh, what do you call that? Wusa, what do you call those things? Uh, Meditation. Uh, meditations, uh, things, uh, things of that sort uh, that you can take a look at as well. So they're all there for you. I'm, also, the chat. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Miss Green. I don't know if you were done, but I wanted to talk to them about the panorama survey. Oh, go ahead. No problem. So we, um, our district wants your feedback as well. So parents, if you're on, um, we would like to get, hear from you. So I just put in the chat. Um, don't know why. I don't know if it worked or not, but I just put in um, the survey. is called Surveys Panorama. It's supposed to be a link, and <laughs> did this yesterday. Um, I it, it's not linking up. It's my, it, could someone assist me with this um, to make this link up? Um, but basically our district is asking if they just want to hear your feedback on how things are going. And so uh, if you didn't get a chance to take the survey, I know they sent it to your home, uh, to your emails. Um, hmm. All right, I guess, I guess not. Anybody can uh, help with that? Does anybody have access to the link? No. I know Stu, Stu did it the last yeah. time, Stu. I'm looking, just one second. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, a parent had asked about um, opportunities for college that are non-AP or non-AVID. So through our counseling program, um, counseling uh, program uh, at Orange Vista, we make sure, we want to make sure that all students are going to college and that they're career and college ready. So just this last um, November or just this past November, we have our counselors uh, focus on our seniors because those are the ones who can apply for college. And um, they will hit every single senior to find out where they would like to go to school. Um, at the beginning, when your student becomes a senior at the beginning of the year, they'll take a survey uh, to see what, uh, what colleges they would like to attend. And then our counselors actually meet with them to discuss their options as far as their GPAs are concerned, if their A through G requirements are fulfilled um, and where they can go and they will help them apply. We, do, um, we did have uh, workshops for application uh, to fill out applications um, and uh, counselors also have taken appointments through a, a, a thing called Calendly um, in order to help the students. So we make sure every single student, so it's not just a program that gets to go to college, it's all of our students that get to go and apply for college. Okay, it looks like the link is there. So parents, if you can, 
uh, take some time out uh, after any questions are being at, uh, answered for you. We appreciate your time tonight. Um, and thank you. Um, I, I'm really enjoying, this is my first year here as well. Um, amazing school. Uh, I heard someone, I saw someone in the chat say about it's a great school. It really is. Um, there was a question in the chat Let's regarding the screen. Yeah, I know there were some questions coming through. So maybe we can tackle some of those questions. Um, I answered the one um, as far as the attendance email addresses. And then, let's see. I think we hit them all. Um, when does SAT prep starting? Okay. When we're not doing SAT 